Right. Good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Rangers in Isolation. Um, as you can see, it's just before sunrise, and what's going to be a beautiful morning out here in the bush. Uh, see what we can find. Already started with the sighting of uh, some impalas and a hyena. So the sun is about to pop up at any moment and it's uncanny how often lions will roar as the sun starts coming up. Huh. Well, well that'll have to wait. I just saw some wild dogs on the road ahead. There you go. Two wild dogs running across the airstrip. So earlier we had hyena behind impalas, now we've got wild dogs behind wildebeest. Wild dogs are approaching a herd of impala. There we go. It looks like this is the same pack that featured in the other, uh, our last episode with wild dogs. A pack of two with a female who's heavily pregnant, also missing an ear. Folks, I think they might have just killed one. Yep, they just got an impala here. So it looks like these two dogs are trying to figure out if it's if there's enough food there to warrant a salvaging mission. But uh, that female has to be careful. She's heavily pregnant, um, and uh, no need to take un any unnecessary risks. 
So they also did have a fair amount of that in Pala before it was taken from them. And as I said earlier, fair play to the hyena. Um, that comment might have raised a few eyebrows. Um, people are very quick to criticize hyenas for living off the hard work of others. But the ugly truth of it is that given the chance, leopards, lions, wild dogs will all steal as readily as hyenas do. The only difference is hyenas are much better at it. So that hyena decided that it had, had enough. It's left the kill. And these two are now feeding off what little scraps remain. Folks, so mornings like this once again highlight how when you make a plan, nature often laughs at you. So often we leave camp. Um, you can hear a lion roaring now. Lions rowing again. Right, folks, so there are several um, lions roaring in the distance. It sounds to be one male by himself, but then a lot more, or well, many more lions together in one place a little bit further away. So we're going to go follow up there. As I was saying, that's uh, we left camp this morning. That was our idea to stop and listen at sunrise for any audio. Um, and we came across these two, had a good sighting with them, and uh, now those lions are roaring. Let's see if we can find them. again <laughs> um, never quite predict what's going to happen here we're in the area where we heard those lions roaring but we didn't find a lion we have found a leopard leopard it's like a female leopard walking down the road here Just see her walking over there. Folks, so while I was with the Three Rivers female, um, Mike and some of the other rangers found lions in the Mashapiri River, um, a little bit further north of Rat Race Camp. So 
and then switch across to them. Morning everyone, um, it's Nick here. We are heading out this morning uh, to an area uh, further south called Hyena Waterhole. Um, Pete has been out already this morning. Uh, he's had some great luck finding the Three Rivers female leopard, um, as well as finding two Cape hunting dogs with an impala kill. Uh, I believe a bit of interaction there with our hyena. Um, and we're hoping that this morning we will be able to maybe find some lions. There were reports of lions in the area that we're heading. So yeah, please stay tuned and hopefully we will have some luck. All right, folks. So we've been on our way to uh, Hyena Waterhole, but uh, as we were sort of driving down here, down in the Machapuri River, um, I just happened to see one of the lions actually standing up and, and walking. Uh, so it's quite a distance away. So uh, we're going to start making our way around there now, get a closer look at them. Um, just having a look through the binoculars, it does look to be like there's quite a few lions there, um, potentially the Kambula Pride with the Gauri males. Uh, but we'll only confirm that once we get a bit closer. All right, folks, we've come down into the river where we saw the lions lying down, um, and we can confirm that it is the Kambula pride as well as both Gari males. Um, so potentially, we haven't counted all of them at the moment, but potentially at least 22 lions um, just sleeping here behind us. Nick, what's he doing? Mike, he's busy mating with the female right now, and as you'll notice, it's a very short process, but a very repetitive process. So obviously this female is either coming into estrus, um, he's obviously picked up on the pheromones, and uh, potentially looking at the new litter or new generation of the Kambula pride, fathered by the Gauri males. Notice there are two males here, and this male is trying really hard to keep the female away from his brother. Um, he doesn't want to share those mating rights just yet, but this mating process can go on for several days, and eventually he'll get quite tired of all this mating. Like I said, it's a short process, but very repetitive, and sooner or later his brother will, will get the chance to mate with this female. Uh, she will try mate with both of them to kind, kind of uh, almost reassure them that they potentially both are the fathers, uh, therefore securing the safety of those cubs. Why would they need to be reassured that they're the fathers? Well, male lions will typically kill cubs that aren't theirs. Um, so by the female mating with both of the males, it kind of just assures that they'll uh, both protect those cubs. Uh, and feel like they've both fathered or sired those cubs. Um, often, yeah, male lions, if, especially if they are taking over a new pride, will kill or, or eliminate the cubs, bringing back the, the, the females back into estrus, um, and therefore allowing themselves to, to father the next generation. Uh, they don't have the time to, to, to wait around for cubs to grow up or for those females to come into estrus. Um, sometimes a, a male lion's reign over a pride can be quite short. Typically how long would that rain be? It varies um, from individual um, to individual. For instance, these males have, have been territorial over this pride for a number of years, um, but they've also had quite a strong coalition. I mean, initially four male lines, down to three, and unfortunately down to two now. But working in a coalition like that, potentially their, their reign could be prolonged as opposed to a single male lion trying to protect the pride uh, it could be a very short reign so uh, the coalitions are vitally important uh, and the male lions themselves are vitally important for stability in an area uh, stability within a pride and obviously the growth of a pride um, so the male lions have a really important role to play with the, with the, the pride dynamics so Nick, there's quite a lot of cubs here as well as the uh, adult males, adult females. How are they all related to one another? Is there one male that's a father of all the cubs? Uh, or one lioness that's a mother of all of them? How does it work? So Mike, the only relation that the cubs would have is that they could potentially share the same father. Um, it's almost impossible to say who out of the males is the exact father. Um, they could potentially both be the fathers. Um, 
The females themselves, um, the cubs come from five different litters, five different females. Um, but the females, the, the, the six adult lionesses, they are related to each other as well, originating from, from the same pride, uh, potentially sisters or mothers and daughters. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the cubs, the, the only relation that they would have would be that they are fathered or sired by the two males. So Nick, we know these males as the Gauri males. Do you know anything about their history or how they got to where they are as the dominant males in this area? Well, Mike, they originally were five male lions in this coalition. Um, they made their way into Mala Mala from the northern parts. Um, the one male vanished um, quite soon after arriving here. Uh, not too sure the circumstances behind that. The fourth male uh, he believed to uh, pass away from a snake bite. Uh, they're not too sure which snake or what kind of snake. Um, the third male unfortunately suffered a pretty severe injury um, to his hip. Um, unfortunately there was nothing that we could do um, and he eventually slowly but uh, surely succumbed to his injuries. Uh, but the two remaining males are still doing a fantastic job. They're very strong, very healthy um, and uh, spending the majority of their time with the Kambula pride um, but yeah they are still very dominant in this area uh, and for the time being there doesn't seem to be any immediate threat um, from any other males surrounding the area. All right Nick so these lions are looking like they're not in any particular hurry to do anything right now do you know when they last ate or when they're likely to hunt again? Um, Mike they have eaten quite recently. You can see that their, their stomachs are quite full. Uh, we do know um, that they were eating a wildebeest I think about two days ago. Um, we got updated from our neighbors. Um, in saying that they are very opportunistic uh, and with so many mouths to feed they'll need to take every opportunity that comes their way. So even if they're sleeping like this in the river and something stumbles across uh, where they've been sleeping uh, they might have to quickly jump up and, and get into action. Um, so, if not during today, sleeping like this, there's a good chance that tonight they, they'll get up and move and, and be on the hunt again. Alright Nick, so do you think it's worth sitting here with these lions for the rest of the day until they do anything or shall we carry on and find something else to see? Um, Mike, it's uh, highly unlikely that they will do anything, like I said. They are relatively well fed, so they're quite comfortable. They've got a beautiful shady spot here in the, in the, in the river. So I'm almost certain that they will spend the entire day here, maybe only starting to get active later this evening. Um, and that's probably when they'll head out and, and start to look to hunt. So um, for us, I think it is possibly a good time to, to move on and see what else we can find. Um, and I'm sure we can catch up with these lions this afternoon. Um, I don't think they'll move too far from where they are now.